What is going on, GBA fans and Astro J fans alike? We are back for week four of the Global Battle Association Association Association, the GBA. Um, the reason this video is going up so late, guys, is that Kyle and I had to reschedule a million times, uh, and we ended up playing at 8 p.m. tonight, Sunday night. Hopefully, this is up before midnight. And uh, yeah, the, just a huge amount of delays. I uh, don't blame Kyle, he had some stuff. I think he got sick too, so it's it's okay. Uh, but we did play tonight, so that's why this is going up so late. So I do apologize for that. Uh, shout outs before I get the uh, video started to my Jenner, Tony, and as well uh, as everybody that helped me out with Citra. Of course, the quality looks amazing. Uh, you guys seem to be enjoying these, so uh, very glad about that. But yeah, let's hop into it. So we are taking on Kyle A and the uh, Miami, Miami Dawn fan. Yeah, that's it. Miami Dawn fan, the other Dawn fan team in the league. We have uh, Borussia and Miami. And uh, Kyle's got a very offensive team. Uh, it's extremely powerful. I looked at it uh, when I saw my week four matchup and I was like, how the hell does anybody deal with this? Uh, I don't understand. So he's got Protean Gren. That's his first pick. He's got Zygarde 50. Uh, Blaziken with speed boost. Uh, that's his other Uber. Uh, Excadrill. Rabombi, Thunderous T, one of his Zemons, Klefki, Mega Blastoise, Celebi, uh, Lolan Persian, his other Zemon, and Swellow. So, uh, while it is very offensive, he's got a lot of good bulky uh, pivots and uh, mons that can just be run very, very uh, tough to, to break down. Things like Zygarde, uh, Excadrill, Klefki, Mega Blastoise, Celebi, Persian. Uh, they all have uh, a defensive niche as well as being quite powerful offensively. So, very tough uh, team to build for. So the first thing I did when I looked at his team was uh, I was like, all right, what Lunala set could I bring to capitalize on his team? And I thought about it and I'm like, okay. So the one thing I want to do is force a Scarfer that can kill Lunala if I'm Scarfed. So I think I'm going to run Scarf. So I ended up putting a Choice Scarf Lunala on the team. Bat Signals here with Moongeist Beam, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, and Dazzling Gleam. So Moongeist Beam, of course, being the most spammable move against his team, his only resist uh, being the Greninja, uh, I don't think he ha well, he has the Alolan Persian as well, which is why we're running Dazzling Gleam in the last slot, because it's a very good uh, sweeping option against Kyle if all that's left is like Greninja, Zygarde, Persian, I have super effective coverage for the three, so perfect move. And then we have Bolt Beam, because Bolt Beam hits his team quite nicely, Zygarde at plus one does not outspeed me, I'm outspeeding Zygarde specifically, that is the, uh, the speed on this thing and uh, max special attack and a little bit into defense, mainly because uh, he has Shadow Sneak with Greninja and I wanna be able to take it as, as well as possible. So that's why we're running the uh, the extra defense there. So that's Bat Signal, moving on to go to the Reuniclus. So I saw his team and I'm like, okay, he has a, he has a Blaziken <laughs> and uh, that thing absolutely destroys me. Uh, Rotom Wash gets destroyed by plus two high jump kick. Everything else gets either destroyed by high jump kick or flare blitz and uh, Salamence being the only one that resists both gets like mollywopped by Stone Edge if it takes too much damage and Salamence is like my primary Excadrill check. So uh, I need a, a an emergency response to the Blaziken. So I decided to bring uh, Reuniclus with Focus Sash. The idea here is that uh, if he gets up to plus two with Blaziken at any point, I can just bring in Reuniclus, click Psychic and revenge it. I will not click Trick Room against the Blaziken because if it just so happens to be running uh, Vacuum Wave, for whatever reason, uh, I'm gonna take a plus two Flare Blitz and then die to Vacuum Wave after. So um, I didn't see it in any, any of my mocks, but it is a possibility and I don't wanna have to run into that. So uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's Reuniclus. Psychic, Signal Beam, Focus Blast, and Trick Room, max special attack, max HP. Why run max HP with Focus Sash? Well, where else are you gonna put these EVs? <laughs> that's, that's the idea there, is that uh, uh, I just want the extra bulk for uh, Trick Rooming up on anything that can't kill me. So, uh, or bring me down to Sash, essentially. So yeah, that's uh, that's Reuniclus. Uh, Focus Blast is there, of course, for the Greninja, Excadrill, uh, and the Persian. Single Beam also hits Greninja and Persian, but it has the ad added benefit of being able to hit Celebi super effectively, and um, uh, and it's just a much more clickable move if I don't want to miss. And of course, Psychic hits uh, his team pretty well across for anything that isn't an immunity, so, uh, or a resist like Excadrill. So that's GOAT. Moving on to Togevoir, the Mega Mawile. We are bringing this boy back again, once again with Stealth Rocks. I think this is the the, uh, the third week in a row that I'm bringing Mawile as a Stealth Rocker, even though I have so many more good Stealth Rockers like Titar, Nido Queen, and Cobalion, uh, Mega Mawile just finds itself running rocks like all the time. Uh, mainly because it's the mon that forces the most switches, and uh, I think that that's, that's a good thing uh, to have rocks on, so 
Stealth Rocker, obviously, we got Knock Off, Play Rough, at Sucker Punch. So, the idea with Mawile here, obviously, this is supposed to be Intimidate. I'm just going to switch that real quick. The idea with Mawile is that uh, on lead, I can lead with Mawile against literally anything and just click Play Rough or Knock Off. And it, it doesn't matter what it is, I will live a hit with this investment and I will be able to, to knock something out or get a lot of damage off on something. The only mod that can break me, turn one, is, uh, well, there's a specific Gre Greninja set, which is uh, Modest uh, uh, Choice Specs can knock me out. Modest Life Orb, HP Fire, actually uh, has a max roll of like 99.7. Uh, it just fails to knock me out, and that's because of that Force Spadef you see right over here. That's, uh, it's pretty crucial. Uh, and the only other Mon would be, uh, like, Choice Banded Blaziken. I think that regular Blaziken can't knock me out, if I'm not mistaken, uh, due to the Intimidate drop. Uh, Z Thunderous might be able to, as well as, like, a very, very specially offensive, like, Water Spouting uh, Mega Blastoise. Those are, like, the only things, and they're all, like, sort of unlikely uh, on his team, but... You know, uh, Z-Thunder has a great matchup against me. Uh, Mega Blastoise has an, an, an option to run Water Spout, so uh, all of those things, definitely something to watch out for. But for the most part, I can lead with Mega Mawile and either just click Knock Off or Play Rough against most of his team. Greninja seems like the best lead against me. Excadrill is also a very good option, uh, both of which cannot knock me out unless Greninja is Specs or Excadrill is Banded. So, uh, speaking of Excadrill, I won't stay in on Excadrill turn one. I'll switch out immediately into Grandina, our Salamence, and that's uh, that's because we got Charty Berry, and the Charty Berry is mainly there for Blaziken. I'm well aware that Blaziken can run HP Ice and a very strong HP Ice, but an SD set seems a lot more likely against me, and uh, I wanted something to be able to cover this. I believe the uh, the HP plus defense investment that I have on this thing is enough to cover plus one, so after an Intimidate drop and a Swords Dance, plus one Life Orb Adamant Stone Edge from Blaziken, I will live after rocks. And I'll be able to, to deal back an enormous amount of damage with the Earthquake, so much so that it'll be left in range of one Life Orb hit, uh, at the very worst. If not, I'm knocking it out. So, uh, and that's assuming rocks aren't up. So we got Earthquake, Dragon Claw, Roost, and Defog. Dragon Claw is there because I'm most likely going to outspeed the Zygarde. Uh, I very much doubt Max Jolly would come. Uh, it's more likely to be Max Adamant, uh, and I have enough speed on here for Excadrill, so I definitely outspeed a Max Adamant Zygarde. Uh, Dragon Claw also hits very nicely across his team. Earthquake is there specifically for the Blaziken and the Excadrill, and hits them very nicely, as well as Klefki. Of course, Klefki can run Magnet Rise, so I wouldn't be doing as much damage, or uh, none at all, in fact, but uh, but that's okay. I, I just like having Earthquake on here for specifically for those two, Blaziken and Excadrill. Uh, and then we have Roost and Defog. Roost is to keep me healthy throughout the game so I can Intimidate. Uh, a bunch of his physical attackers, and Defog is to get rid of the rocks that Excadrill is going to set up. There's a, uh, a possibility that his Excadrill runs the OU set, which is Rock Tomb, Toxic, uh, Rapid Spin, and Stealth Rocks, in which case uh, I will likely... Uh, he won't, like, Rock Tomb my Mawile turn one, that's for sure. If anything, he'll get up rocks. Uh, I'll always go into Salamence. If he gets up rocks, I'll Earthquake the first turn, uh, then I'll Defog, and then I'll figure it out from there if he happens to be a Rock Tomb, Toxic set. But uh, for the most part, I think I should be okay. A set like that isn't a threat to the rest of my team, uh, let alone my Salamence. All it can do is really get a Toxic off, so I'm not too worried. Moving on, we got Greg the Rotom Wash. Now, you, I know what you're thinking. Uh, his two ground types can hit you uh, <laughs> with their ground type moves, uh, being Zygarde and Excadrill, uh, because of um, Thousand Arrows and Mold Breaker, respectively. But... Uh, I'm still gonna bring this thing because it's an excellent check to his Greninja if it's a special attacker and it's an excellent check to his Mega Blastoise as well. That's the main reasons and my team is very weak to both of those two as two water types. So I like having Rotom Wash around specifically for that reason. Uh, it's able to uh, to soak up special hits very nicely from both of those attackers. The Dark Pulses coming out from both of them uh, aren't doing more than like 40%. So I'm able to, to eat them up and paint split up. Uh, we got Hydro Pump on there obviously because I want to be able to hit the Thunderous on the Switch uh, as well as his Zygarde and his Excadrill. Uh, should they switch into me predicting a Volt Switch? I got Volt Switch on there of course. Uh, and then Willowis, it's a very standard Rotom Wash set, but it leans more towards specially defensive because of the fact that his special uh, his special water types are huge threats to me. Moving on, our final Mon on the team is Liz the Nidoqueen, coming once again with a Choice Scarf, and actually a very similar set to last week, if not the same. 
Uh, we got a, a very similar set to Lunala. Now, the reason that I'm bringing Choice Scarf Needle Queen is because I need an immediate check to his uh, his Thunderous, something that I can switch in. If he goes for Psychic or HP Ice, I don't believe neither. I don't believe either will knock me out. Only a Z, a Z Psychic would. Uh, and I'll be able to hit the Thunderous so long as it's not Scarfed with an Ice Beam in return. If it's Scarfed, then it goes for HP Ice or locks in HP Ice or Psychic, then I can bring in Mawile and pretty much pick up a kill uh, at any point in the game. So that's uh, that's the idea with this Nino Queen. Ice Beam is nice for hitting the Zygarde, of course, the Thunderous, as well as the, uh, the Celebi. Uh, and the Swellow, we got Thunderbolt on there because that hits the Greninja, the Mega Blastoise, uh, and that's pretty much it. We have uh, Earth Power because of the uh, Excadrill, should be pretty uh, self-explanatory, mainly Excadrill and Blaziken, but it hits uh, well across his team. And finally, Flamethrower is, some is something for the, uh, the the odd Rabombi that shouldn't come, uh, considering I have Trick Room on my team, but uh, but for the Rabombi as well as the Excadrill, it's, it's something better to lock into, uh, say, his Thunderous and his Excadrill or last two months I can lock into flamethrower and knock them both out potentially so that's uh, that's the idea there as well as hitting uh, Celebi and Klefki for super effective uh, and avoiding Klefki's magnet rise against me too so that's the team let's move on into the battle portion and let's see what Kyle brought so we have a team with Greninja, Mega Blastoise, Klefki, Blaziken, Thunderous, Therian, and Excadrill. I look at this team and I'm like, okay, so he brought all the offensive threats plus a Klefki. Uh, that, that was the thought process. Uh, and I looked at the team and I was like, okay, there's no reason whatsoever for me not to lead with Mawile. The only two things on this team that can really... Uh, actually, there are three. The only three things that can really destroy Mawile realistically are going to be Blaziken, uh, Excadrill, and Thunderous, and I can switch into all three of those. Uh, his two physical attackers that I mentioned, Blaziken and the Excadrill, I can switch into Salamence on, and if he leads with Thunderous, I'm probably just going to go into Nidoqueen. If he U-turns, then so be it, uh, but then he's going to have to play around with a Scarf Nidoqueen. So, uh, let's hop right into the game. Let me just bring up Citra, sorry. And uh, let's see what Kyle decides to lead with. So here we go. Kyle is issuing that challenge and uh, he's actually going to lead off with his Greninja, which is what I had imagined um, in, um, in prep as well as had seen in quite a few mocks. So he's gonna lead off with Gren. And I know that I can go for a turn one knockoff. Excadrill is his likely switch in. And if he stays in an HP fires and he's life orb, he's going to die to knockoff. Um, almost all the time unless he has a huge amount of HP investment. So I'm going to get off a of Mega Evolution. He stays in, which surprised me initially, turn one. Um, but uh, you guys are going to see here that he uh, he actually goes for a U-turn, and that's going to uh, to trigger his Protean. And I see U-turn, turn one, and I'm like, okay, that was a little less likely to come, U-turn. I'm assuming you're choiced in some way. And if he's Choice Scarf Greninja, then he can always beat my Lunala, which is a little bit annoying and something that I'm definitely going to have to play around. Brings the next boyfriend, the uh, the Excadrill. I'm going to get a knockoff. He has no HP, so he's going to end up actually taking like 80%, and he ends up being Salic Berry. Uh, I know that he's not going to go for Earthquake here, because I have the option of, uh, of dropping a Sucker Punch on him and just knocking him out, and two turns wasted, essentially. Uh, all he would have done was five damage to my Mawile, so I'm going to go into Salamence, as he does indeed get up his Stealth Rocks, and uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to defog them away. I don't know if he expected to be faster than me here, but I did speed creep the uh, a max speed jolly drill And I'm able to get off a knock uh, a, a defog excuse me as he's actually gonna go for an iron head and do a little bit of damage to me with this uh, It's minus one. So it's not gonna be too terribly much And I'm gonna be able to knock out the extra drill on the following turn with a dragon claw I opted for dragon claw because I know that Kyle's smart he knows that Earthquake is an option, and he wasn't going into Klefki. If anything, he would have switched into Blastoise or Thunderous uh, to be able to take a hit, so I wanted to be able to hit those as hard as possible, and Dragon Claw being Stab, of course, did that quite well. So he's going to bring in his Thunderous here, and uh, I'm going to switch out into Liz uh, to be able to soak up any hit. He goes for an HP Ice. He does a little bit over half to me right here. I think he does about 52%, if I'm not mistaken, a little bit more, 55, 56 and uh, I'm able to eat that and go for an Ice Beam on the following turn. Obviously, he's going to be able to knock me out with the HP Ice. This is something I mentioned in the team builder. If he was Scarfed here, Mawile would have come in after, seeing his Drill is dead, and it would have pretty much picked up a kill with Play Rough. So that was uh, that was the idea. And uh, I'm going to get off enough damage on the Thunderous to put it in range of my Bat Signal, the Lunala. And uh, I know that he's not Scarfed because he didn't outspeed my Nidoqueen unless he did some really wonky <laughs> speed creeping. But either way, Lunala was faster than... Uh, 
that this is, animation, by the way, is awesome. Lunala was was faster than uh, Nido Queen to begin with, and both were scarfed, so I was definitely outspeeding the Thunderous no matter what. He's now gonna go into his Greninja, and this scream scarf. Like I'm I'm not joking. Like the fact that he came in here and he knows that I'm scarfed now, I'm like, okay, this Gren has to be scarfed. There's no way. So I'm gonna go pull a switch out into Mawile. He's he's actually gonna go for a U-turn, which was quite ballsy because he didn't really have a good switch into Moon Guy's Beam, and if I decided to stay in, then uh, then I would have gotten pretty much another kill right there. Uh, I'm sure the Blastoise could have taken two, considering I'm Scarfed, but uh, it still wouldn't have appreciated them and uh, would have been a lot lower um, later in the game. So, he's going to bring in his Blastoise now, and I'm going to switch out into my Rotom, uh, get in Greg here uh, to be able to soak up any hits, so we're going to wait to see what he does. Um, unfortunately, my Rotom doesn't have a lot of speed. It's mostly Spadef invested, and I put a lot into defense as well. What I should have done was invested a little bit more into speed, uh, but I knew that I was never going to be able to realistically creep uh, Mega Blastoise if he decided to go max speed, so I just opted to go into defense, uh, put the EVs into defense so, to make sure that I could take hits from Blaziken as well if it came down to it. But uh, he's going to go for a Water Spout here. He does a lot of damage. If he goes for another one or a Dark Pulse, I'll be able to uh, pain split up. Uh, but I now realize that I'm not faster than the Blastoise, and that might be a little bit of an issue later. Uh, so I'm going to Pain Split on the Klefki. I'm going to get it back a little bit of health. Klefki doesn't have the best HP either, so uh, Rotom is not going to get up to full, unfortunately. Uh, but we are going to be able to go for a Bolt Switch here, and if he has Toxic, he's going to basically waste a turn going for Toxic on my Rotom, which is quite, quite nice. But he actually goes for Spikes, so good play on Kyle's part. He's going to get up Spikes. And um, I'm going to go for a Bolt Switch here, and I'm going to get back in my, my Mega Mawile. Uh, and Mega Mawile is going to be able to either deal a huge chunk of damage to something else or uh, be able to knock out this Klefki if he decides to stay in eventually. So um, he's going to get back a little bit of HP. I'm going to take some uh, some spike damage. He recovers with the leftovers and I'm actually going to opt to go for uh, Stealth Rocks here because later in the game, if it comes down to Reuniclus sweeping with a Trick Room up, um, I need some damage on Greninja. And the Stealth Rocks are going to help a lot with that because seeing as it's a Scarf Gren, he's probably never going to keep it in on anything. Uh, and he's probably just ever going to bring it in on Lunala once it gets a kill and try to revenge it. So uh, I opt for Rocks here. He's going to go for Spikes. And I'm going to go for a knockoff on this turn. Luckily, we don't get fully paralyzed and I'm able to get rid of the Clef Key's leftovers. And uh, those are now gone. Now, what I should have done here was actually switched out into Rotom. Uh, and try to uh, kill this thing off with a uh, Hydro Pump, but I'm actually going to let my Mawile take an HP Fire, which is a little bit bad, because with two layers of Spikes up and being under half health, I'm not going to be as good of a switch in to Greninja locked into Dark Pulse now. And that might make things a little bit more difficult. So he's now going to bring in his Blaziken for the first time in the match. I still have uh, my Salamence around with no rocks up, uh, mind you. So that's going to make things uh, very easy for me uh, when it comes to this Blaziken. I'm going to be able to switch into it no problem. As I'm going to get off an Intimidate here. And uh, my man Kyle is going to go for a Flare Blitz. Uh, however, this move is very annoying because it has this very rare chance to 10% burn and now he has a burn off on my Salamence and what this means is even though he only has the uh, the Blaziken, the Blastoise and the Greninja around, I can no longer click Dragon Claw free, as freely as I would have liked because um, I'm not doing as much damage to the Blaziken for one in case he has Roost or HP Ice and secondly uh, I'm like they're, it's not going to do any damage to, to Blastoise or uh, or Granny either because I'm not attack invested or very little, uh, if so. And uh, I, I need to knock out this Blaze again. This is this is a big obstacle for me, so I want to get rid of it. So I'm going to go for Earthquake here, and it's going to do absolutely pathetic damage to this Mega Blastoise coming in. He's going to take 12.5 from Rocks, and he's going to take another 12.5 from Earthquake. So it's like he switched in on Rocks twice. Uh, realistically, and uh, at this point I'm going to uh, bring in my Rotom again. I want to keep my uh, Salamence alive just for the Intimidate and to have another option against Greninja if it comes down to it. So I'm going to switch out here and I'm going to go into uh, my Rotom. Now the problem here is that, as I mentioned earlier, Blastoise is faster than me. <laughs> and uh, Blastoise being faster than me is actually really bad because uh, the only thing that I can re really do to this thing is go for a Volt Switch. And that is pretty much going to leave me at uh, like 10% health. I'm going to drop to 22 HP here, and I'm going to get off a of Volt Switch. And now I'm no longer a switch into Greninja, and that's not good because his Greninja pretty much freely clicks Dark Pulse against a paralyzed Mawile at about 35%, and uh, a Rotom at, 10, at 22 HP. 
Um, basically, what I have to make it is that I get in Reuniclus against his uh, Blaziken at this point. I'm going to revenge his uh, Blastoise with uh, Thunderbolt from Lunala, preventing his Greninja from switching in on a potential Moongeist Beam, as he's going to bring it in, in now, and he's going to take a round of rocks. So I need one more round of rocks for Signal Beam to potentially kill this thing. Uh, it does a min of like 82 to no HP. So I'm going to switch in Greg here. I'm going to sack it off to the Dark Pulse. I'm going to let it go down. And then my only option at this point is to go into Mawile and scare him out. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go into Mawile, but I'm not gonna click, um, I'm not gonna click Play Rough. I'm gonna click Knock Off. And the reason for that is, one, it's more accurate. So if I do break through Para and flinch, I'm gonna be able to 100% uh, hit the Greninja and at least get rid of its Choice Scarf. Secondly, if the Mega Blaziken comes in and gets sacked off to, to play rough, um, he just comes back in with Greninja anyway and keeps clicking uh, Dark Pulse, so it doesn't accomplish anything. Uh, I wanted to potentially get rid of an item on Blaziken as well. I hadn't seen its item yet. So I'm going to switch out here into uh, Salamence after getting fully paralyzed, which actually might have been worse for Kyle. Um, he's going to go for a Flare Blitz here. He's going to do no kinds of damage. At this point, I don't believe he has Stone Edge or HP Ice because he hasn't gone for them yet against my uh, my Salamence, even after seeing um, my my Charty Berry get knocked off and me roosting. So he's going to switch out his Blaziken here, and I'm going to go for Roost. Now, the reason I go for Roost is that Dark Pulse is not going to knock me out. Um, what I should have done, in fact, was just attacked what was in front of me. But I'm going to go for a Roost, and this is actually going to end up working out for me because Kyle is going to feel as if he's put into a position where he has to Ice Beam my Salamence to knock it out. And this is really good for me because now his Greninja is Ice-type, and it's locked into Ice Beam. And what that means is that my Reuniclus is going to be able to come in here, so long as he's Scarfed, of course, and we're still working under the assumption that he's Scarfed, right? We're, we're convinced of it. Uh, so I'm going to go into Reuniclus, and I'm like, please... Greninja be Scarfed otherwise, but I mean if he's not Scarfed then Lunala pretty much wins I just have to live the Shadow Sneak if he has it, but it turns out that he is Scarfed He's gonna switch out into Blaziken uh, on my Trick Room, and I'm going to be able to Psychic the Blaziken and Signal Beam the Greninja now Here's the thing I go for Psychic here, and Kyle was actually Aya Papa Berry, so if he would have switched around between his Greninja and his Blaziken and gotten his Blaziken back up to a good amount of health and shut down my Trick Room and gotten in Greninja on a turn where my Trick Room expired, he actually still had a very good chance to win this game. I'm not sure why he didn't make that play. Maybe he he assumed that I was just going for Focus Blast and was going on uh, off of a miss and didn't want to risk his Greninja. But ultimately, we end up taking down the Miami Dawn fan with a nice little signal beam from the GOAT Reuniclus right there. This is a 3-0 win for your Montreal Habsols. Uh, really good game to Kyle, honestly, uh, despite all the, uh, the rescheduling and whatnot. Kyle was very kind. He was a very nice, uh, nice individual to to schedule with and to speak to. I recommend you guys go and check him out in the description down below. His link will be there. Should be the top link. And uh, go and give him some love. Check out his video. It should be coming out at, at about the same time as mine. If not, it's coming out tomorrow on Monday. So uh, go and check him out tomorrow. But uh, but yeah, guys, that's uh, that's the game. I think we did pretty well. I think we played around his threats pretty well as well. Uh, I was able to identify what everything was. Seeing you turn on Greninja really give away that it was Scarfed. Uh, and I was able to play around it correctly. Uh, and as threatening as Lunala was of a threat, uh, it only got two kills against Blastoise and the... Um, and the Thunderous, but I think that's good enough. Mawile got one as well, um, and uh, Mawile's still in top 10, I believe, at this point, uh, with uh, with seven kills and three deaths, so uh, very nice game, awesome, uh, really enjoyed this one. GG to Kyle once again. If you guys did enjoy it, as usual, make sure to leave a like down below for us, let us know what you thought of, uh, of the, uh, the team building process, as well as the way that we played. Uh, I think we did a really good job. If this is your first time on the channel, first time checking us out, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. If, uh, if you haven't done so already. And uh, I will catch you guys next week for week five. And uh, we are taking on uh, our, our biggest rival, I would say, at this point in the, uh, in the GBA series, uh, Jolt, TTM Jolt. Uh, if you guys haven't checked him out yet, <laughs> then definitely go and uh, go and watch our other games, first of all, and go and check out his link in the description. The TTM, the Token Minorities, are a great channel. Uh, you're definitely going to want to go and check out their content for Draft League. Uh, they were doing TCG for a long time, and Goldoa is streaming uh, pretty pretty consistently as well uh, on there. So they got they got a nice little group of uh, of guys. 
uh, over there doing uh, doing good work for the Pokemon community. So go and check out that channel too. But yeah, guys, that's going to be it. Once again, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys next week. Ciao.